Good morning, champions. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Today I'm going to read you a book called Franklin's Flying Bookshop. I'm really excited about this book. I had never read it before. Um, my friend Miss Silvestri gave it to me. It's an awesome book. I think you guys are going to love it. Before we get into it, let's just calm our, our bodies down, our minds down, our, bod our bodies down. So I'm going to have everybody touch your snout, take a deep breath in through your nose, touch your chin, let it out through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth, one more, in through your nose, and out through your mouth. Awesome job. So the author of this book is Jen Campbell. What does the author do? The author is the person that writes all the words in the book. They write all down. The illustrator is Katie Harnett. The illustrator is the one who draws all the pictures. They make all the illustrations, all the pictures in the book. There are two words that I want you guys to know before we read the book. The, fir the first word is quaking. We're going to read about somebody quaking in their boots. If somebody is quaking, they're shaking. They're shaking. Most likely they're scared. If someone's quaking, they're shaking. They're so scared that they're shaking. The second word is clever. Now, we've talked about clever before. Remember we read that book, Maybella the Clever, where the mice were marching? Clever means smart. You're using your brain. Clever. Okay. Franklin's Flying Bookshop. Franklin loves stories. Stories keep him warm at night. His front door is a bookcase that keeps out the wind. There are lots of books inside the cave that Franklin lives in. He likes to read them out loud for everyone to hear. Oh, see he's reading to little mice that are up here listening and bats listening in his cave. Every day, Franklin reads about King Arthur and roller skating, about electricity and baking. He reads about spiders and ballet and how to do kung fu. When the sun goes down, Franklin reads by the light of a thousand fireflies because fireflies like to hear stories too. But if it's a warm night, he spreads his wings and flies into the sky to read by the light of the moon. There is a village near Franklin's cave. Sometimes Franklin goes there, but it's always quiet and it's always empty. And he can never find anyone to read stories to. Okay, so we know it's not completely empty because we see people in here. How do these people look? Look at her. How do these people look? They look scared. Do you think that the people are scared of Franklin? You can see his tail right here. Do you think they're scared of him? Why would they be scared of him? He seems like a perfectly nice dragon. He is a dragon though. Okay. Let's hold on to that. So Franklin goes home and he reads about gymnastics and helps the bats in his cave set up a trapeze. Then he yawns very loudly and stretches his tail and climbs into bed with a cup of chamomile tea. He doesn't seem very dangerous. I don't think we need to be scared of Franklin. He sleeps tucked on up under hundreds of comics and re dreams about Vikings sailing over the sea. One day by the stream, Franklin sees a man. Who are you? cries the man, quaking in his boots. He's shaking in his boots, he's so scared. I'm Franklin, 
says Franklin, and he holds out his hand. I'm a dragon who loves books, and I live in a cave. But the man drops his fishing rod and runs far away. So Franklin goes home and reads about music and helps the mice in his cave start up a band. Next day by the farm, Franklin sees a lady. What are you? cries the lady, shivering on the spot. Uh, I'm Franklin, says Franklin, and he holds out his hand. I'm a dragon and a band manager, and I like ballet. But the lady screams loudly and runs far away. So Franklin trails home and reads about space, and he helps the fireflies make patterns like the stars in the sky. The next day in the woods, Franklin sees a young girl. She has bright red hair, the same color as the leaves, and she's reading a book, sitting under the, a tree. Do you think the little girl's gonna be scared of Franklin? How come? Let's find out. Who are you? Asks the girl, jumping up to her feet. Uh, uh, I'm Franklin, says Franklin, and he holds out his hand. I'm a dragon who likes stargazing and playing cro croquet. I love dragons, cries the girl, and she shakes Franklin's hand. You're in the book that I'm reading about a faraway land. Was she scared? No, she was excited to meet him. Luna tells Franklin she's read about remote secret islands, about treasure hunts and pirates, about fruit bats and acrobats and how to be a spy. Franklin tells Luna he's read about sword fighters and fire eaters, about circuses and ant eaters, about flower arranging and carol singing and making apple pie. Luna and Franklin feel like they are made out of stories, stories with exciting beginnings thrilling middles, and very happy ends. Stories about new people and strange places and about making friends. They want to share their favorite books with as many people as they can. So they sit down and they come up with a plan. They hoist bookshelves up high with the help of mice and tie ropes around and around to make sure they fit tight. They move a sofa, some cake pans, tie comics on with string to make a small lopsided bookshop between Franklin's wings. So boys and girls, here's, here's Franklin's snout and here's his back and there's one wing and the other wings on the other side and they've put a little carpet and a sofa and a bookshelf up on top of his back. They made a little bookshop right there. Everybody climbs on board. Luna holds her breath. The mice hold each other. The fireflies gasp and the bats cross their toes. Franklin bends down and runs as fast as he can. He sprints down the hill and spreads out his wings, and he takes off into the sunset with the help of the wind. Franklin lands his flying bookshop in the middle of the village. It's that dragon, cries the fisherman. What a monster, another cries. His name is Franklin shouts Luna, a fierce look in her eyes. We built this bookshop together from the books in his cave. Franklin's kind and he's clever and he is my friend. So Luna's telling them he's, he's kind and he's clever. He's really smart and he's my friend. Luna's a very brave little girl. There is a small silence. Franklin shuffles his feet in the quiet street. 
It's nice to meet you, he says as he waves at the crowd, who have stopped in their tracks and are listening now. We have lots of stories that we'd love to share. Please say hello and pull up a chair. The fireflies light up the shelves, the bats cartwheel along the bookcases, and the mice clear their throats <clears throat> and they start singing songs. It isn't long before the villagers start taking a look, climbing up onto Franklin to peer at the books. Franklin takes a deep breath as Luna passes out cake. He tells them stories about scientists in Antarctica and snakes. He whispers tales about dragons and how to make creme brulee. And everyone is listening to what he has to say. So nobody's scared of him any anymore. Everyone's up on his back, listening to his stories while they eat cake. Let's fly, Luna smiles as the fireflies dance and the acrobatic bats show off their kung fu. So they all hold on tight as Franklin takes flight, reading books by the light of the moon. The end. I love that book. I am wondering, Franklin and Luna, they liked a bunch of different kinds of books. They loved to read a whole bunch of different books. What kind of books do you like to read? For your writing assignment today, I want you to write me a sentence about what kinds of books do you like to read. Do you like to read about dinosaurs? Do you like to read about unicorns? Do you like to read books about Sad Sam and his friends? I don't know, I can't wait to find out. So when you write your sentence, I want you to sit down and do a really good job. You don't forget your big three. Uppercase letter at the very beginning of your sentence, but only at the beginning of your sentence. There shouldn't be any other uppercase letters unless it's the name of something, right? Number two is personal space between all of your words. And the third thing is a period at the end or an exclamation point. If you're writing a sentence that you want me to, you want me to read it and say, I like to read about dinosaurs. If that's the kind of voice you want me to read it in, then put an exclamation point. But if you want me to use my reader voice, I like to read about dinosaurs. Then I want that period at the end, okay? I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I miss you and I love you. Bye.